Why? Why did you come out tonight on a Tuesday night that's raining like this in terrible weather? Did you come out to listen to 10 of us talk about things that we're passionate about? What I assert is that you came to learn something. And it's human nature to want to learn something about ourselves. So I'd invite you to sit back. I'm going to give you some information that's going to change your life. It's going to change the lives of the people that you love. And it's probably going to keep some more money in your pocket. So we're going to get down to business. Medicine is in a state of crisis. We all know that. Look at our rising premiums. Look at our rising out-of-pocket expenses. Look at what our coverage is doing. Now, there's a saying that many of us heard, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back together again. If Humpty Dumpty is our health care system, the king's horses and the king's men are the government programs, insurance companies, pharmaceutical companies. Do we want them putting back our health care system? Einstein said, you can't fix a problem with the same thinking that created the problem. Now we're going to talk a little bit about what happens in our health care system. And I told you, I'm going, to give you, I'm going to give you some information. Health was defined by the World Health Organization in 1946 as a state of physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. This was 70 years ago. We're not here yet. Now, the World Health Organization also keeps track of how much it costs for health care. In this country, we are spending about $8,000 for every man, woman, and child that lives in the United States. That's 330 million people. The next closest country is Switzerland, and they're spending less than five. Now, Switzerland in overall health is rated in the top five. The United States were rated at 37th. <clears throat> We look at the state legislative on health care in December of this last year, and they said, we spend twice as much money as any other country on health care. We have the highest obesity rates, the highest cancer rates, the highest infant mortality rates, the highest chronic disease rates, and the shortest lifespan. Why? That's not a good return on our investment. Most of us wouldn't invest in that. But I want to talk a little bit about what happens in our healthcare system. The first physician that we recognize is Hippocrates. He was the father of medicine. He was the first physician that said disease is not the result of design intervention. It's not the results of sin. And so his students, when they studied, there were diagnosticians, and then there were holistic practitioners, and the treatment for everything that they saw, proper nutrition, proper rest, and good hygiene. Now the Latin word for doctor is to teach. Now William Osler is the founder of John Hopkins University. And one of the things that he did was he took students out of the morgues studying people that had deceased about their disease, and he took them into the hospital wards. And he began to study live people with disease. Our current medical system does the same thing. We study disease. We study people that are sick. We study how to get them past their sickness. We're not trained. We don't study healthy people or healthy lifestyles or how to get people healthy once they've had a disease or get out of the hospital. You have disease, and then you're on your own to get healthy. Now, one of the things that he said is the role of the physician is to educate the masses, not prescribe medicine. He saw us as teachers. The Mayo brothers, William Mayo, said the aim of medicine was to prolong life 
prevent illness, and promote health. The aim being the physician would become obsolete. Now, people ask me all the time, why do physicians not practice that way now? Why do they not educate? Why are they not focused on health? There's a physician, his name was Semmelweis in the 1850s. He had some radical ideas in medicine at that time. He thought that physicians should wash their hands before they saw patients, before they did surgery, before they delivered babies to reduce infection. It was such a radical thinking that he was outcast from medicine. They committed him to an insane asylum, and he was killed there. This still happens today. In the last three years, there have been nearly 100 physicians with radical ideas about medicine that have either disappeared or died under mysterious circumstances. Why? Now, I said that I was going to teach you how to bring out the physician inside of you, how to put more money in your pocket. What do physicians do really well? As a physician, we plan. When you're sick, we plan. We develop treatment plans. We develop care plans. But you plan. If you built a house, you have a house plan. If you built a business, you have a business plan. If you're planning for retirement, you have a retirement plan. You plan your vacations. We all know how to plan. But what is a plan? It is simply a roadmap to get us from where we are to some place that we want to be. That plan is only as good as the commitment to take actions on that plan. Where most of us fail to plan is we fail to plan to be healthy. And if we fail to plan to be healthy by default, we plan to be unhealthy. Now I'm going to talk about some structures that can be part of your plan. So as we talk in the next few minutes, I want you to think about what can be a plan. Do I want to continue like I am now and get the same state of health that I have now? Or do I want something more? So we're going to talk about nutrition. And everything that we need to know to be healthy, we learned in grade school. What do they teach us about nutrition? Eat breakfast. Our parents had us try to eat breakfast. We also were eat our fruits and vegetables. We also talked about drinking water. Drink plenty of water. In fact, taking our weight, Dividing it in half, drink that many ounces of water if you're going to sit around and watch TV. If you're going to do more than watch TV, you need to increase that amount of water. And it's not coffee, it's not soda, it's water. Because our body is a moving column of water. Everything that's alive depends on the moving column of water. If you put bad fluid in, you're going to get bad results out. In Japan, they have sumo wrestlers. Do you know how they make a sumo wrestler that big? They get up in the morning and they work. They eat their first meal at 11 o'clock. It's a large protein meal with lots of carbs. In the afternoon, they take a nap. They don't do anything. They eat their next meal about six or seven o'clock at night. In the evening, what do they do? Nothing. What was your day like yesterday? Most of us are eating that type of way, where we eat one or two meals a day, we eat large protein and large carbs. No wonder we have a problem with weight in this country. Now, there are other things that we're doing. We're paying attention to foods that we think are healthy. Some of them are, and some of them may not be. Some of them may be destroying the bacteria in our GI tract that keeps us healthy. When that happens, we have problems with obesity. We have problems with autoimmune disorders, high blood pressure, chronic disease, cholesterol problems, diabetes, all the chronic diseases may actually be related to the foods that we put in our mouth. But in grade school, we also learned about 
Play. Where do we learn about play? Watch the kids on a playground. It's social. Play is social. It's out there with other people. And it's physical. It's physical activity in a social environment. In fact, it's physical activity with no intended outcome. And it's participation. Play is participation. So if we want to learn how to play, watch the kids on a playground. But when was the last time that we played? When was the last time that we had physical activity with no intended outcome? We go to the gym, we work out because we're running away from disease and being sick. We're running away from something that makes us a victim. But if I'm running towards health, I'm empowered to do something to get me something that I want. It no longer feels like a chore to go to the gym. It's giving me something that I want. Next, we talk about rest and sleep. You remember as a kid? How many, what time did people go to bed when you were in grade school? And we thought our parents were trying to keep us from doing, learning about something that they had secret that they did as adults. We tried to stay up all night. We tried to stay up with them. It was, I need a drink. I need food. I need something so we could stay up. Well, guess what? We won the battle with our parents. We get to stay up as late as we want now. And what's that costing us? The next day we're tired. It's costing us our vitality. For those of you that are college students, what's it like to stay up for 24 hours to cram for a test? How do you feel the next day when you're taking that test? I don't perform quite as well. In fact, our body is in a catabolic state most of the time that we're awake. So if you want to lose weight, exercise in the morning when it's in a catabolic state, and then in the afternoon, if you want to gain weight after 3 o'clock, eat large food, amount of food and don't do anything. You'll gain weight. Okay? So sleep long. It takes about 7 to 8 hours for us to regenerate during sleep. And that's sleep before 3 a.m. Next, we could talk about stress. We are a stress factory. We stress and worry about everything. I know I heard it. We stress about money. We trace that... Chase that green piece of paper all over town. How much do we keep? How much do we give away? We stress about our relationships. We stress about asking somebody for a date. And we stress when they give us a date, what we're going to do. But we stress about everything. And stress is causing us all kinds of medical problems. But we worry about things that happened yesterday. What can I do about that? Nothing. We worry about things that are going to happen tomorrow. What can I do about that? Nothing. Did you know that worry is like praying for something bad to happen to us? If we want it bad, let's worry about it. So there are several things that we can do about that. One, when we're stressed, how can we actually clear our minds? And one of those is, what can I be grateful for? Am I grateful for the people that I have in my life? Am I grateful that I have the things that I have? Am I grateful for the sun? Am I grateful for the person that causes me stress, that at least there's enough emotion that it causes me stress? What can I be grateful for? And finally, it's our relationships. Our relationships are important to us because illness starts with an I. Our illnesses happens inside of our isolation. We know that one of the most detrimental things to people as they get older is their isolation. For those older population, that's what's leading to their disease and illness. Wellness starts with a we. Our wellness happens inside of our communities and our relationships. However, the most difficult relationship that we oftentimes have is a relationship with ourselves. What's the self-talk? Do you love me? Am I good enough? Did I do that right? Is there a scarcity of love in this world? It's a free gift that we can simply give and we can simply receive. It doesn't cost us anything. Can we turn to the person on our right and the person on our left? Can we love them simply because they exist in our world? 
It's a gift we can give away. All of those things will impact our health. There, I'm going to give you an example. There's a 20-year-old boy. His name was Brian. He was a college student. Brian got sick in college, and he was admitted to the hospital. And while in the hospital, he was on a round and a ra- rounds of antibiotics. He'd get out, go back in the hospital, get another round of antibiotics. Eventually, after many rounds of antibiotics in a year, he was pretty much incapacitated, couldn't function in college. He dropped out. He went to live with his parents. His parents then were doing the same thing, rounds of antibiotics for another six months. And then they decided to do something different. They changed the way that he ate. They added some nutritional support for him. They changed his friends and got him involved with people. Within two months, he no longer had any of his symptoms. The next semester, he went back to school, and now he's an engineer. He developed a plan, and that plan was to get from where he was sick to change things about his life that could actually give him what he wanted. Now, the plan is only as good as our commitment to the action. And what action do we take? Do we sit here with the same actions that we took before, getting the same results? Or do we change something, take some actions, and committed to those actions to get where we want to be? Einstein said, or Edison said, the doctor of the future will prescribe no medicine. He will educate the patient in the human form, proper diet, prevention of disease, and promotion of health. Our physicians are not there yet. So now we've talked about a plan. Talked about the access to being healthy and the physician inside of you has a plan. The access to keeping more money in your pocket is what is my plan to be healthy? What what will you do now? The same things over and over? It is totally up to you. Thank you.